there is a concept that x linked inheritance can also be dominant or recessive that is because this dominant or recessive applies only to a female individual because they have two x chromosomes now coming to x linked inheritance uh, there is a concept that x linked inheritance can also be dominant or recessive that is because this dominant or recessive applies only to a female individual because they have two x chromosomes and this gets a little bit com complicated because there is some concept known as lionization so if you look at the karyotype of uh, females then one x chromosome is active and the other x chromosome is completely silenced so depending on uh, which uh, chromosome is silent and which gene was present on that things get little bit complicated when we talk about dominant and recessive inheritance when it comes to x linked inheritance but when it comes to males this doesn't make any sense because they are getting only one x chromosome and the other one is the counterpart is a y chromosome now examples for x linked recessive which are more more common than x linked dominant include ocular albinism viscoch aldrich syndrome fabry's disease brenton's a beta gamma global anemia then g6pd deficiency duchenne muscular dystrophy lesnihan syndrome becker's muscular dystrophy and hemophilia and a and b now this fabry's disease has been frequently asked asking you which of the following is inherited as an x linked disorder so you have to remember that particularly even viscoch aldrich syndrome has also been frequently asked so remember these two in particular vas and fabrice if you look at the pedigree chart of x linked uh, dominant inheritance you will notice certain key points that males like generally whether it is dominant or recessive generally whenever you see the pe uh, pedigree chart of an x linked inheritance you notice that there is no father to son transmission father can transfer to daughters mother can transfer to son and daughter but there is no father to son transmission that is a typical characteristic of x linked inheritance so there is no father to son transmission so again trace back from distal most part of the pedigree chart and see if you notice this kind of a thing so obviously you have to see whether it is an autosomal dominant or recessive as a first step and when after once that is done when you start tracing back you notice that see here is an affected female look back father is affected so father has transmitted the affected gene to the daughter right then this is an affected female look back the mother has transmitted here is an affected female look back father has transmitted but can you notice any situation where the father has transmitted to a uh, son here no here no so here anywhere like you don't see a father to son transmission that is very typical of x linked inheritance see in this particular dominant inheritance pattern let us take two hypothetical situations so in one situation the father is affected and the mother is unaffected so in the offsprings if it is a daughter one x chromosome is coming from mother and one x chromosome is coming from father and because it is a dominant disorder the gene which is present on the father's x chromosome which is contributing to daughter will manifest with the disease so the daughters are affected but if you look at an affected son sorry the son he remains unaffected because he is getting his x chromosome from mother he is getting his y chromosome from the father because the mother has unaffected x chromosome the, the gene which is required is there it will not manifest with disease in son so the earlier rule that father does not transmit the x chromosome disease to son holds good in the dominant setting the second hypothetical situation let us see where the mother is affected but the father is unaffected so that means the mother is giving an affected gene affected the x chromosome it, she can give it to son because the only x chromosome that son gets is coming from mother or she can give it to daughter uh, so daughter she is giving one chromosome the other x chromosome is coming from the father because it is a dominant trait it will manifest in disease in both son and daughter who are getting an affected chromosome 
from the mother but it can also lead to unaffected daughter or unaffected son if he is getting x chromosome from the mother is unaffected like the affected mother may give an unaffected x chromosome if she is heterozygous homozygous obviously the story is different but if she is heterozygous then she will give one unaffected chromosome to son and he is getting a y chromosome from father so an unaffected son is also a possibility when mother is affected and she is heterozygous similarly she can give an unaffected x chromosome and a father can give an unaffected x chromosome leading to an unaffected daughter so when we have an affected father she leads to an affected daughter and unaffected son but when we have an affected mother if she is heterozygous both are possibilities both son and daughter can be affected or both son and daughter cannot be affected so all, all these are possibilities okay so again the same rule holds good can you notice father to son transmission in in both circumstances when the father is affected or when the mother is affected obviously no so this rule of no father to son transmission holds good okay that is a key pointer for you to say that the inheritance pattern is x linked now looking at x linked recessive inheritance again let us take a hypothetical situation we have an affected father who has a mutated gene on his x chromosome and mother has two normal genes now when the outcome happens the son is obviously unaffected the same rule holds good because he is getting one x chromosome from mother and which is unaffected in this case but daughter she is getting one x chromosome from mother who is unaffected but then she is getting one x chromosome from father which is affected but because this is a recessive disorder the presence of one defective gene does not transform into disease it calls for two affected genes so thus in the heterozygous state she becomes a carrier so she is the carrier of a defective gene so she phenotypically remains unaffected but she is a carrier of defective gene the next circumstance is when we have an unaffected mother but she is a carrier she is a carrier and we have an unaffected father let us see how it transforms into in terms of manifestation so when father gifts an unaffected chromosome to daughter and mother gives her unaffected chromosome obviously we have an unaffected daughter then when father gives the y chromosome to son and mother gives an unaffected x chromosome we have an unaffected son but when mother gives an affected x chromosome to daughter and father gives a normal x chromosome what we see is a carrier daughter right so from mother she is getting an affected x chromosome but from father she is getting a normal x chromosome so she becomes a carrier because here again it is heterozygous state and a recessive disorder would not manifest with disease but in this setting the son can also be affected if he is getting a defective x chromosome from mother if he is getting a normal x chromosome from mother obviously he will be unaffected because the other counterpart he is getting a y chromosome but if he is getting a defective x chromosome from mother and he is getting a y chromosome from dad so the result is he is an affected son so in this setting we have a possibility of affected affected son but a carrier daughter so recessive disorders are quite rare to manifest in daughters daughters become carriers and sons become manifest with disease that is the usual occurrence okay so that was about x linked inheritance